Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. We're gonna be talking about inflation. We're gonna be talking about Disney. We're gonna be talking about all kinds of things about inflation in Disney. Woo. Without further ado, let's do this. All right guys, so what I wanna talk about is the fact that Disney shares just slide. They're sliding right now as Wall Street's disappointed with subscriber growth. We're gonna write just a little bit of this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna link the uh, story below, but I think it's really important to go over this and how it has to play into what we've been talking about on this channel for the last three or four months. After a rough day uh, on Wall Street, Disney shares are tumbling after hours as its Q4 earnings showed Disney Plus subscribers growth missed Wall Street's expectations. Now this is really interesting, just so you guys know, because I already know that Disney is like free, um, like if you sign up for Verizon accounts and other things like that, right? So they've already got like a ton of initial pop right there. It says subscribers for the company's streaming service, which has received widespread praise for hit shows like The Mandalorian, blah, 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 uh, increased 1.8% quarter over quarter, equivalent to about 2.1 2 million uh, new, new customers to 118 million, missing the average street estimate for the subscriber base to increase to 119. Meanwhile, the company reported earnings of 37 cents a share, excluding some one-time terms or items, missing estimates of 49 cents, okay? So shares are off about 5%. So this is my point. We've been talking about this on this show for a little while is that I was saying, as you, and I want people to understand, you have this inflationary wave that's moving, right? And we were talking about this back in uh, January, actually. It was gonna get worse and worse and worse. We, we, I walked you through the lumber cycle where it went all the way up, and that was a great thing to watch. You know, when, when lumber futures are like, gosh, I wanna say $1,600 a board, you know, for a thousand board feet. Uh, I said, look, it's gonna come crashing. I, I told you guys when it was gonna come crashing, got a ton of hate from it. Um, I got a lot of people that were really hopeful. They were like, man, I hope you're right. Um, but I was, I was explaining and it kept going up. I think it topped like 18 something, if memory serves me right. And I can't, figured July was gonna, it was gonna crash because of the cost of, the seasonality cost of fuel. And plus you coupled out with the amount of money that's being shoved in the market with all this crisis that was going on. I knew that the lumber was gonna collapse, okay? People would stop buying it, okay? When people stop buying things, they get cheap, all right? What do they say? The best um, uh, cure for high prices is high prices. As prices go up, you stop buying, so the prices go woo, because companies still need to feed themselves, so they discount things. And we're gonna start seeing that in cars and all kinds of cool things over the next year. But I wanted to show you that cycle, and it was a great way to show you that cycle. But then I also said, I said, look, you're going to start to see deflation uh, rear its ugly head ex uh, first and foremost in, uh, in discretionary spending. And this is a great example of discretionary spending. We've seen uh, Netflix come off, uh, you know, with uh, earnings showing that people are unsubscribing or they're not growing at the same clip that they used to, right? Um, Disney is one of those that are going to start to fall first. And then usually you see that just extra money that's being spent on these things, just people you know, pull back, they cancel their subscriptions or they stop getting new subscriptions. I mean, you're gonna see things like Pandora and those music streaming ser services just fall by the wayside. I mean, if I, if I was a serious uh, uh, XM uh, salesman, I'd be looking for a new job right now, if you know what I mean. But hey, that's not financial advice. Just a dude with a coffee, a McDonald's coffee. It's cheap, a Brohawk. I'm in my 40s. I should be, should be cruising around a vet right now, just combing my hair, raking it, or ooh, better yet, a Camaro with a really long strip of mirrors. Don't take financial advice from me. But my point is, is that these are the things that people stop to spend money on because things are getting expensive. The things they need, like food, shelter, clothing, warmth, energy, all that stuff, all right? So these are the great signs that we're moving into deflation, okay? What is next is you are gonna see companies like Disney Plus lower their prices, or they're gonna come in with these crazy introductory offers that if you sign up for a year's contract, we'll give you four or five months free. That's next. That is the sign that they are hurting. They haven't thrown in the towel yet. Now, honestly, they could drop their prices a ton. It does not cost a lot. I mean, it costs a lot to run all this information on servers, but trust me, <laughs> they're making a ton of profit. So they could really come off their prices a ton, uh, but they don't want to because companies, corporations know that once you come down in prices, you back down prices, it is so hard 
to get them back up um, unless demand soars. And, and companies know sales cycles. They understand how this works. So I wanted to share that story with you because this is just bringing in more to our narrative that we are now moving from an inflation wave to deflation. Now, that doesn't mean all inflation is going to stop. We're going to keep seeing inflation in fuel. We're going to see it in uh, food. Um, we're going to see it for sure in rents, okay? Until there's a point which the consumer says, no, I'm not doing it. And that's when it falls. And there will be that day. I believe it's coming soon. I believe it's coming in within the next uh, year, year and a half, that we're gonna see a massive inflationary wave. Okay, I don't wanna give you an exact date. I wanna tell you it's super close, because uh, you know we gotta prepare for this stuff. We gotta save up. You know, hey, right now, if you say you don't have enough money for a silver quarter, or a, you know, a silver quarter costs what, five bucks right now? And you go, I don't got enough money to buy silver and gold to hedge myself against inflation. I got an idea, cancel Disney, you know, or cancel Netflix. Probably be the best thing you ever did. Pick up a book on how to get rich. Read the book on how to get rich. That's advice right now. You want advice? This is financial advice. This part right here. Um, judge, if you're watching this, uh, this, like, I'm going to stop. Stop. Like, it's like, and then everything I say next is advice, financial advice. Cancel your Netflix, save the 10 bucks, go buy a book. I'd say Rich Dad, Poor Dad. That's a good book. I like it. It's the first book I ever read. I started buying tons of houses after that in 2000, 2001. Then take the leftover money and go buy a silver dime. Even if it goes down in value, guess what? It's still worth a dime. You haven't lost that much money. It's like two bucks. That's financial advice. All right, we'll cut this now. All right, guys, it's the end of the video. There's only a short section of financial advice. With that being said, the Economic Ninja is out.